Disclaimer, I do not own the haiku characters that are to be used in this story. Photos or covers were picked from Google. Credits to the owner. Once upon a time, there was a kingdom named Summer. It was ruled by a kind king and queen. The kingdom is fruitful, beautiful, and bright, just like the kingdom's name. The king and queen were blessed by a beautiful daughter. She had red-orange hair like almost the sunset. Her smile was as bright as the sun. The kingdom rejoices upon seeing the princess. It is a beautiful blessing from the sun god to have a princess like her, everyone in the kingdom celebrated. The young princess grew into a fine young lady. She had a bubbly personality and a positive aura that everyone around her felt happy upon seeing the princess. When the princess turned 18, it was time for her to find a husband to help her rule the kingdom. All the young men, princes, noble, or ordinary line up for the princess to choose. The following days were busy for the princess. Dates after date, lots of courting gifts were given to her, yet she couldn't choose anyone from them until a prince from a faraway kingdom came to visit them. The prince came from the moon kingdom. He is a young, fine man. He has wits, kindness, and an astonishing personality that the king and queen like. Do you want to meet my daughter? The queen suddenly asked. The prince was taken aback since he was just paying a visit to the Summer Kingdom since his father, the King of Moon Kingdom, could not do it personally since he fell ill. It would be my pleasure, your majesty, the prince said. And the queen summoned the princess. When the princess came to the room, the prince was wonderstruck by the beauty of the princess. You summoned me, mother? The princess asked. Yes, my dear. Kindly meet the son of one of our allied kingdoms, the moon, Prince Hatsuki, the queen introduced the prince to her daughter. The princess stared at the prince and gave courtesy, it's a pleasure meeting you, Prince Hatsuki. It's my pleasure meeting you, princess. Prince Hatsuki asked as he didn't get the princess's name. Hikari, your highness, Princess Hikari, the prince said as he returned the courtesy. Since the prince stayed in the kingdom, the two became acquainted. Princess Hikari is always the one to host Prince Hatsuki during his stay. It was the last day of Prince Hatsuki in the kingdom. The prince and princess decided to watch the sunset as they spent their last day together. Hikari, the prince said as he stared at the princess's beautiful face. Hum, the princess hummed, are you happy? The prince asked, it's been a week since he met Princess Hikari. He was fond of her enthusiasm and all, but her eyes were empty, which the prince easily noticed. The princess was taken aback by the sudden question of the prince. I am happy, the princess smiled as he stared back at the prince. Your eyes tell otherwise, princess, Prince Hatsuki said. Princess Hikari's eyes widened in surprise. This was the first time that someone had seen through her. No one saw how she felt so empty inside aside from Prince Hatsuki. Tears started to flow from the princess's face, and so the prince hugged her. Everything will be okay, Hikari, the prince said as he comforted her. When Princess Hikari calmed down, she told the prince all of her feelings. How she felt so empty. She wants to comfort everyone, but no one comforts her. How she gave light to others and yet felt so dark inside. The prince listened. After Princess Hikari said everything, the prince said, are you willing to share all your burden with me? Princess Hikari had a spark in her eyes as she nodded. It was the first time that the prince saw a life in the princess's eyes that made him feel happy. They returned to the castle, and all of a sudden, Princess Hikari announced, I've already chosen my husband. It will be Prince Hatsuki. The king and queen were surprised by the sudden announcement, and yet they were still happy about it. The prince chuckled and said, you are a silly girl. The princess laughed lightly. I'll return to our kingdom to report to my father and ask for your hand properly then, princess. Can you wait for me? Prince Hatsuki asked, and the princess said yes. The prince traveled back to his kingdom with a promise to return in autumn, and the princess waited for his return. Days turned into months. The leaves start to fall, and the daylight becomes shorter, indicating the autumn season. The princess was elated since the prince would return to the kingdom. Days pass by, autumn ends, and the snow starts to cover the land, but Prince Hatsuki hasn't returned. 
No one had any news about the whereabouts of the prince, even the king. Princess Hikari waits. She waits more than intended for the prince to return. Months turned into a year. It was the second autumn season that the princess had waited for Prince Hatsuki's return. For that span, the princess's mental health deteriorates. Her intrusive thoughts, which she once ignored, were consuming her. He doesn't love you. He toyed with you. He will never return. He already found someone better than you. It was like war in the princess's mind every day, trying to win against those dark thoughts. He loves me. He will return. He promised. Those battles that she always won at the end of the day came to an end. One night, as she lay in her bed, those dark thoughts struck. You thought you found the person who understands you, and yet he never returned. He disliked you since then. Since he can see through you. He dislikes someone like you. A problem to everyone. Why can't you die tonight? Everyone will be elated if you are dead. Her tears started to fall, and so she rose from her bed and headed to the balcony. She stared at the moon as she stepped onto the railing. She closed her eyes and felt the gentle breeze blew. Die. Yeah. It's been a year since Prince Hatsuki returned to the Moon Kingdom. When he returned, it was pure chaos. The nearby kingdom declared war against them, and Prince Hatsuki had to take action immediately. No one were able to inform their allied kingdoms since everyone was busy, and also, between their alliances, the Moon Kingdom was the most powerful when it came to warfare and strategies. They've just won the war and maintained the peace of their kingdom. After the war, Prince Hatsuki informed his father that he would have to return immediately to the Summer Kingdom since Princess Hikari was waiting for him, wishing his father and the other elders to accompany him. He has to prepare some apologies for the delay and so on. He also brought some courting or more likely a wedding gift for his future wife. And so the prince traveled back to the Summer Kingdom wishing the princess was still waiting for him. But as the prince came back to the kingdom, it was not what he expected it to be. The joyous and lighted kingdom that he ever saw was the gloomiest place when he returned. Everyone was crying and wearing white or black, heading towards the center of the kingdom. The prince nervously ran towards the center where all the people gathered. Excuse me, he said. When the person in front looked at him, the prince. The prince returned. Give way to the prince. The person shouted. As everyone heard about it, the sea of people divided and gave a path for Prince Hatsuki to walk through. Confused, Prince Hatsuki walked near the elevated place in the center. That's when he saw Princess Hikari lying still in the bed of flowers wearing a beautiful white dress. Hikari, he muttered as he ran towards the body of Princess Hikari. Hikari, please wake up. I'm here. I came back. I'm sorry if you waited long, I have reasons. So please wake up, Prince Hatsuki cried as he held the body of Princess Hikari. The body that was as warm as the sun before was now cold as ice. Hikari, the prince muttered again. The king came near the prince and held him. Prince Hatsuki, we have to bury Princess Hikari now, the king of Summer Kingdom said. No, just give me this day, please, the prince pleaded. The king let the request of Prince Hatsuki and ushered everyone back to their houses. He also asks the servants to help the king and elders of the Moon Kingdom get situated in the castle. As Prince Hatsuki calmed down to his grief, he laid the lifeless body of the princess and headed inside the castle, calling one of the elders from their kingdom. Prince, you summoned me? The elder asked. Yes, you are the only one I know that could help me. You are a powerful mage, right? Prince Hatsuki asked. The elder stared at the prince suspiciously. Based on your question, your highness. I guess I cannot grant your request, the elder said as he bowed, refusing to stare directly at the prince. Send me to the underworld, Prince Hatsuki demanded. I cannot, Prince Hatsuki cut out, send me to the underworld, and I'll deal the rest from there. I'm afraid I cannot do that, your highness, the elder said. Are you defying my order? No, your highness, but there is a great possibility that Princess Hikari might not be sent to the underworld, the elder explained. Prince Hatsuki stared back at the elder coldly. The elder continued, as the king of Summer Kingdom explained to us what happened, 
the princess took her own life, and her soul might be sent right away to the place that was forbidden to everyone. The boundary of life and death. Prince Hatsuki asked which the elder agreed. Prince Hatsuki fisted his hand, which almost drew blood in his palm. Everyone knew about that place, and no one was able to step foot on it. It was where the souls of those people who killed themselves were sent out. He was devastated, Princess Hikari didn't belong to that place. She should not be in that place. How can he save Princess Hikari's soul? When Prince Hatsuki woke up the next day, he was weirded out. He doesn't remember that he went out to the field and slept outside, but right now, he was in the meadow. We looked around, he was unfamiliar with the place and so he stood up and started to roam around. He aimlessly walked and found a small village near the meadow. He entered the village and saw a few children playing around and some adults watching them. He took notice that the people had some animal features that he had just seen or imagined through books. When he came near towards the market area of the village, he found a potion shop. He didn't know why, but his instinct said to come inside. The bell chimed as he opened the door of the shop. Good morning, what? The person on the counter greeted him but stopped when that person saw the prince. Hatsuki. Prince Hatsuki stared at the girl. It was Princess Hikari with pointed ears. Tears started to flow in Hikari's eyes. What are you doing here? Prince Hatsuki did not say anything but instead came near to Hikari and hugged her. Hikari, he whispered, you shouldn't be here, Hatsuki, Hikari cried out as she tried to push away, but Hatsuki hugged her tightly. Why did you do that? Why didn't you wait for me to return? I'm sorry if I let you wait that long Hikari, Hatsuki devastatingly said. I'm sorry, Hikari repeatedly said as she also hugged Hatsuki tightly. A few minutes passed by, and as they calmed down, they sat at the fireplace in the shop. Enjoying each other's company, how come you're here? Hikari asked, I don't know, I fell asleep, then I woke up at the meadow near the village, Hatsuki said. They intertwined their fingers as they were enveloped with comfortable silence. Hatsuki secretly glanced at Hikari and saw that the latter was quite happy. How are you here, Hikari? He asked, and so the latter fondly told the story about the village and everyone from it. This was the first time that he saw Hikari with excitement and sparked in her eyes as she told stories about the place. It's unlikely how she toured him back then at Summer Kingdom. As Hikari finished her story, Hatsuki muttered, I hope this dream will never end. Hikari didn't reply, but instead, she squeezed the latter's hand as she laid his head on Hatsuki's shoulder. Will you come back with me, Hikari? Hatsuki asked. Hikari looked at the latter and said, I can't. Why not? Hatsuki asked. I belong here now, Hatsuki, Hikari said. How about me? Will you leave me alone to return? Hatsuki said. Hikari touched the latter's cheek and kissed his lips. I love you, Hatsuki, but you have to let me go. Prince Hatsuki wakes with a gasp. He was a little disoriented as he looked around the place. All he knew was he wasn't in his room. He breathed deeply as he calmed down. It was just a dream, and yet it felt so real, he thought. As he calmed down, he looked around again, and he realized that he was in Princess Hikari's bedroom. He looked around the room. It was spacious. There was a mini library, a small table, and a vanity table. He came near the vanity table and found a folded paper with his name written on it. He took and read it. Dear Hatsuki, if you read this, it means I'm already gone. I'm sorry if I can't wait for you any longer. I know I made a promise that I would wait for you, and yet I broke it. I was too tired to fight back against these thoughts. Don't blame yourself for what happened to me. Please forgive me and move on. If ever I am given a chance again for my soul to linger back to the place of the living. I hope we meet again. I love you, Hatsuki, and please let me go. Sincerely, Hikari. Prince Hatsuki cried as he held the last letter that Princess Hikari gave him when the King of Summer Kingdom knocked on the door. Prince Hatsuki. Prince Hatsuki wiped his tears and said, You can bury now her body, your majesty. K finished reading the book as he sipped some hot chocolate. He was currently camping alone. The setting of this place was quite familiar to me, but I can't figure out where or which book I've read before. 
As he contemplated, an orange butterfly passed through him. Same color as Shoyo's hair. As he sipped again from the cup, he turned the book on its last page he saw a simple note from the author. If you given a chance to choose, what would it be? Will you let go of the person you love or stay with them? He closed the book and stared at the scenery. The camping site that Shoyo found has the best view of sunrise and sunset. So Kei chose the same location to camp and watch the sunset. As the sun set, a voice echoed suddenly in his mind. I love you, Kei. Kei looked around. He was alone, and yet the voice was cleared. It was Shoyo's voice, but it had a devastating tone. I never heard him sound like that. When the sun sets, Kei puts everything inside the car and heads back to the town. He greeted his mother and Akairu and headed to his room to rest and fall asleep. Kei looked around. He was lying in a meadow under the shade of a tree. Weird. It feels like I've been here before, and this is almost the same as the place that I've read in the book. His thoughts were cut off when someone called him. Kei, Kei, look. He looked in the direction of the voice and saw Shoyo standing holding a flower crown. Shoyo. The elf giggled. The place was shifted, and all of a sudden, he was inside a potion shop. Kei, I concocted a potion that can shrink something. Let's try it on you. Elf Shoyo excitedly said. No, why not? Shoyo said using his puppy dog eyes, which he knew very well that Kei couldn't resist. Kei growled, but he should not have given in. Shoyo. Grr. Just no. The elf pouted. Fine. The place shifted again, and he was in the middle of the forest. Kei, help me find these herbal plants that Hitoka requested, Shoyo said. Okay. He was weirded out. He knew these events never happened to him, and yet he knew what to reply. The place was shifted back to the meadow again. This time, they were seated and watching the sunset. Kei stared at his hand and found the wedding ring on his finger. He easily muttered as he kissed the ring in Shoyo's hand. I will always love to watch every sunrise and sunset with you. It was almost a full minute before Shoyo replied. I love it too. Kei took notice of Shoyo's ears and poked it. You have pointed ears. I'm an elf, remember? Of course, I have pointed ears, Shoyo said. Kei was quite confused. Elf, is it Halloween already? He was about to retort when he heard the same devastating voice. I love you, Kei. It's time to wake up, my dear. He woke up in his dark room. He remembered. He remembered now those missing memories. Those memories from the boundary of life and death. It wasn't a dream. It was real. To be continued. If you like this video, consider subscribing by clicking the subscribe button. Bye!